Hello. Once again, I would like to welcome you to our service from the National Forest East Methodist Circuit. It's good to welcome you again. I'm going to hand over to Ray Sutton, one of our local preachers in the circuit, who's going to lead us in our opening prayers. Today is a rainy day, which is unusual for lockdown since we've had so much sunshine and we're thankful for both. And the plants and the gardens and the allotment that we acquired in January are loving the rain. Every time I mention the allotment from January onwards, I call it a godsend. And it certainly has been in the last few weeks, but the rain is very welcome, just as all God's good gifts are. We're going to praise and thank him using part of Psalm 95 and then we're going to seek his forgiveness and be reminded of his wonderful forgiveness and mercy from Psalm 103 and then we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together using the more modern version that those of you who were with us last week shared in then. So let us pray whether you wish to keep your eyes open or closed. God is here. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song in our hearts. For the Lord is the great God. Lord, you are the great King above all gods. In your hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to you. The sea is yours, and you made it, and your hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Lord, we have been conscious of all your goodness in different ways through this period of lockdown. Lord, it hasn't been easy in many ways, but when we think of all the benefits in our lives and count our blessings, we remember most of all that your love surrounds us and that you are like the Good Shepherd taking care of us. Psalm 103. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger for ever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. Lord, we pause before you and we remember the times this week when we have re either remembered or forgotten to say sorry, when we have regretted being less than the person that you wanted us to be. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed from us our transgressions and things we've done wrong. As a parent has compassion on children, so God has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how frail we are, how we were formed, and remembers that we are dust. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and he grants us forgiveness and his kingdom rules over all. Thanks be to God. So we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Hello. This morning I'm speaking to a very, very special friend via Zoom. Uh, and she's agreed to help me with the service today. So I'd like to introduce to you Lorraine. Lorraine the Lamb. Hello, everybody. So, what's all this about, then? Well, I, I wanted you to help me tell a story. Oh, good. I like stories. What's this one about? Well, it's a story that Jesus told a long, long time ago. Oh, I know about someone called Jesus from a great, great, well, let's just say ever so many great grandmother. It's a story she told her lambs and they told their lambs and they told their lambs. And one day, when I have some lambs of my own, I expect I'll tell them. Do you think mm. it might be the same man? It, it probably is. And, you know, it might even be the same story. What's your story about? Well, once upon a time, my ever so many great great grandmother was minding her business, quietly chewing on some grass, when she saw lots of people coming towards her. I see. So what, what, what were these people doing? They were listening to Jesus. Although at the time, my ever so many great great grandmother didn't know it was Jesus. But she could tell he was a really nice man. So she stopped chewing, pricked up her ears, and started to listen. I see. So what, what did you hear? Well, he was saying something about people being blind. And then he pointed over to the sheepfold where she was. Oh, uh, Lorraine, um, what's a sheepfold? Oh, a sheepfold is a very safe place. And at the time of my ever so many great great grandmother, out in the fields where she lived were lots of dangers. Oh dear. Yeah, especially at night. Mm. There were cliffs you could fall off. Oh. There were hungry wild animals that would try to catch you to gobble you up. It was, in fact, a very dangerous place to live. Not like the lovely fields I live in now. Well, I see. So what made the sheepfold a, a safe place to live in? Well, it had a big wall all around it to keep out the wolves and other wild animals and a gate that the shepherd could open to let the sheep in. And then he'd close it again once they were safe inside. Then he'd open it again to let them out when there wasn't any danger to find nice fresh grass to eat and water to drink. It was a place where the shepherd could really look after his sheep. Oh, that does sound a really nice place. In mm. fact, it sounds a bit like the church and we all miss being there. Aye, I suppose so. Anyway, my ever so many great grandmother was looking out through the gate when she saw Jesus point to the sheepfold and say, a man who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in some other way, is a thief and a robber. Well, the story goes that when he said that, she just stood there with her mouth wide open. Why, why was that? Because only the week before, someone actually had climbed over the wall and picked up her uncle Bert and run away with him. Oh dear. And, yeah, and he was never seen again. He'd been stolen by a thief. Well, wasn't, wasn't the shepherd around to guard the sheep? Oh, yeah, but he was guarding the gate, so by the time he knew what was happening, the thief and great, great, oh, however many greats Uncle Bert had vanished into the night. Oh, I see. So did the shepherd run after him? No, her shepherd wasn't a bad man, but he wasn't that brave either. And he certainly wasn't going to risk his life for my great, great, ever so many greats Uncle Bert. Hmm. So, so what happened then? Jesus said, the sheep know the shepherd's voice and will follow only the shepherd, mm -hmm. which is true. We sheep take time to trust a human. That is the shepherd who looks after us. 
So don't be surprised if when you see us out for a walk, when you're, you see us when you're out for a walk, we run away from you. But when we see or hear the shepherd, we run towards him. I see. So did the people understand what Jesus was saying? No, they didn't. And people say that sheep are silly. <laughs> but my ever so many great grandmother understood and she bleated, silly people. Oh, I see. So Jesus, did, did he have to explain to, uh, to the people what he really meant? He did. He said, I am like the gate for the sheep. Whoever comes in through me will be safe. He was saying he was the only one who could help them into an even better sort of sheepfold. You know, that's right. And you know, the story that your great, 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 or however many great grandmothers told is a story that's written down in my special book, the Bible. Oh. It written, it, yeah, it was written down by a man called John. Not me, but another man called John who lived a long, long, long time ago when your great, 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 great grandmother was alive. Whoa, really? That's amazing. And when that John wrote it down, did he also say that Jesus had said, I am the good shepherd, the best shepherd ever to my flock. I won't run away, but I will give up my life to save you. Yeah, he did say something very like that. And he said, I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. Oh, that must have been wonderful to have a shepherd like that. I bet you wish you could have a shepherd like that. Well, as a matter of fact, I do have a shepherd like that. Oh. A shepherd, a shepherd who loves me and who leads me and who gave his life so that I could be safe. But if, well, if he gave his life for you, he can't still be here anymore, can he? Oh, but he is. You see, Jesus, he's my good shepherd. The Good Shepherd. What? The Jesus my ever so many great grandmother talked about is your Good Shepherd now? How? Because he's God's son. And God sent him to be the Good Shepherd for everybody who will trust him. For all time. You mean just like all those people who were listening to him all those years ago? Yep. Yep, that's right. And although he died, he gave his life so that we could be forgiven. God made him come to life again. And he's still my good shepherd today. Well, I am glad that my ever so many great grandmother passed the story to her lambs. And when they grew up, they passed it on to their lambs and her, well, etc., etc. And that John wrote it down. I thought it was a lovely story, but I had no idea it was an even better story for you too. Well, thank you for helping me tell the story. But, but I think it's, it's time for you to get back to eating your grass now and, uh, and say goodbye. OK, well, it's been my pleasure. Bye, John. Bye, everyone. Bye, Lorraine. The reading I'm beginning with is from the Living Bible. It's... John chapter 10 verses 1 to 10. Anyone refusing to walk through the gate into a sheepfold who sneaks over the wall must surely be a thief. For a shepherd comes through the gate. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice and come to him. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He walks ahead of them and they follow him for they recognize his voice. They won't follow a stranger but will run from him for they don't recognize his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant so he explained it to them. I and the gate for the sheep, he said. All others who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who came in by way of the gate will be saved and will go in and out and find green pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal, kill and destroy. My purpose 
is to give eternal life abundantly. And the second reading is the familiar Psalm 23, which I'm reading from the authorised version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for ever. And so we come to gather around God's word. And so let's pray together. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, as we gather around your written word today, we pray that through it and through the spoken word that we may be led ever closer to the one who is the living word, to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I want to thank uh, Brian for that reading from John's Gospel and from the 23rd Psalm. Uh, the 23rd Psalm is a psalm that we looked at when we first began our uh, online uh, services uh, and yet it's one that is worth um, a mention again today in the context of the John passage. One of the places that I really like going to is the Lake District and we often take our caravan to a little field site just outside Hawkshead. There is nothing on this site apart from a tap and somewhere to empty the chemical toilet and views. Wonderful, spectacular views. And in the field around the site that we stay on are, uh, are lots of sheep. And in the springtime, particularly at this time, if we're going up there, uh, there's the lambs and they are, it's wonderful to see them gambling about in the fields and jumping on each other, etc. It's a real treat. But one of the things about um, walking in the Lake District, which is something we do a lot of, is that if you walk through a field of sheep, uh, they will very, very quickly, as we heard from Lorraine, the lamb, they'll very quickly run away from you. They don't want to be too close. But watching the sheep in the next field to us from the caravan, there is one exception to that. And that's when the farmer, the shepherd, comes. And just at the sound of his quad bike coming up the lane, you can see them pricking up their ears. And when he comes into the field, they suddenly run towards the shepherd. Now, of course, they know that uh, they're going to uh, get something good from the shepherd. The, she the sheep know that the shepherd has got good things for them be it sheep nuts or turnips or whatever he's going to throw out for them to have a forage on. The sheep know the shepherd and they run to him. And 21st century sheep in the Lake District are no different from their first century Palestinian counterparts. In the reading that we had from John's Gospel, Jesus takes a pastoral truth Something that everyone around there would have um, would have taken for granted and would have known. It's a, a picture that would very easily be painted. Uh, and he takes some of those truths and applies them to himself. And it's a wonderful passage of comfort, of confidence and of hope. And the picture that Jesus paints is of a safe place, a wonderful sheep fold and as we heard earlier it is a place of safety it is a place where the sheep can be secure where they'll be safe and around this picture of safety and security Jesus weaves some great truths 
about who he is and what his mission is really all about. And um, this morning, or this afternoon, whenever you're hearing this message, I'm going to skip about this reading uh, to bring out a few of the points. And the first of these points is in uh, verse 7 of chapter 10, when Jesus says, I am the gate for the sheep. This is the third of the seven I am sayings, and very, very quickly, hot on its heels, is the fourth one, I am the good shepherd. Now, we don't, we've not heard it in our reading this morning because that comes in verse 11, but it's part of the same story. I am the good shepherd, he says. So when we're hearing about the shepherd actually in the story, we need to have that in the back of our mind. But verse 7, Jesus says, I am the gate for the sheep. And it's an exclusive claim that he is making. He is the only way to get into the sheepfold. And if you want to get into that place of security, that place of peace, that, that place of love, then Jesus says he is the way and the only way in. Jesus says that he's the way in other parts of John's gospel. In John 14, he makes a similar claim where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is exclusive. He is the gate. There is only one gate. If you had more than one gate in the sheepfold, you require more watchmen. So if you want to be in the safety, in the security, in the love of the sheepfold, then Jesus himself says he is the way in. He's the gate, the entry point. But of course, that's not the only image that Jesus uses here. He changes his metaphors and speaks about the shepherd. And we know that he means the shepherd, as I said earlier, because of he's saying in verse 11, I am the good shepherd. And so this shepherd is not just a good shepherd, he is the best. And in verse 3 we learn uh, some things about this shepherd. And the first is that the sheep listen to his voice. They listen and they respond. And listening and responding to a voice implies a relationship. And relationship language is at the heart of the Gospels. Jesus came in order to bring us into a right relationship with God. Uh, and Jesus speaking in Matthew's gospel, when the disciples said, teach us to pray, he didn't just say pray to Father. God wasn't to be some remote, distant, Victorian father where children are to be seen and not heard, and preferably not seen and not heard. No, he said, when you speak to your Father in heaven, say, Abba, Father, Daddy. It's that closeness of relationship that Jesus says that God wants with each one of us. In verse 3 here, the sheep can listen to and respond to the voice of the shepherd. And Jesus' desire for each one of us is to respond to his calling. So the second thing that comes out of verses 3 and 4 is that the shepherd calls the sheep by name. They're not simply a mass of sheep that he doesn't care about. I have lots of numbers associated with me. I have a, a national insurance number. I've got a, an NHS number. I've got a driving license number. I've got a unique tax reference number. Lots and lots of numbers. And to many organisations, I am a number. But not to God. Not to Jesus. I am not like that with him. He calls me and he calls you by name. He knows you and he loves you and he wants to care for you and he wants to be there for you. You're not a number. Again, it's personal. We're not just part of a, a nameless mass, a flock. 
Jesus says, I know you and I call you by your name. And this shepherd who calls us by name is in relationship with us. Back up in the Lake District, the, the shepherd um, the farmer moves his sheet, uh, sheep around a heck of a lot. Sometimes I don't know the reason why. Sometimes they're put back in the same field later the same day. Uh, but it's actually fascinating to watch. Watching during the way that he uh, and his quad bike and his dog, that they round up the sheep and they drive them out of the gate and along the lane and perhaps into a different field, perhaps into the farmyard and then drives them somewhere else later. Now, I use the word particularly deliberately in that, uh, in that description. I use the word drive, that he drives them. In the Lakeland picture, the sheep are driven. They're being compelled to do something, something that actually they don't want. They'd much rather be left alone in the sheep, minding their own, in the field, minding their own business. But look at the difference here. In John chapter 10, the sheep are led. They follow. They follow the good shepherd, not because they have to, but because they want to, because they trust him, because they know him, because he is able to lead them. And they follow him because they know he's going to lead them in to good places. I love that passage in Jeremiah where God says to the people of God, I have know the plans I have for you and they're good plans, not to harm you, but to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. And the sheep follow the shepherd because he leads them into good place. And later in this passage, it speaks of good pasture. And knowing, hearing Jesus saying these words, can't have Psalm 23 in the back of his mind. With a good shepherd leading the sheep, they are well cared for. They led into green pastures. They led beside quiet and still waters. Which leads me to my final point. And that is in verse 10. But Jesus gives the reason for his coming. Now, ultimately, Jesus has many reasons for coming, but they all ultimately re revolve around relationship with the Father, being drawn into a relationship with the Father. And of course, part of Jesus' message is about salvation about the fact that we can know this life that continues beyond death and into eternity. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not die but have eternal life. And so that message of salvation is there. But in, here in John chapter 10 verse 10, he also says, I have come that they might have life and have it to the full, that they might have life and have it to the full. Marxism critiqued religion by claiming that religion was the opiate of the people. It uh, gave them something to hope for beyond the grave and so led them to put up with things in this world, to subdue them, putting up with an awful present with a hope of a great thing tomorrow. But that's not the message of Jesus. I remember one of my uh, ministers uh, back home in Wakefield, one of his favourite catchphrases was, the gospel is not pie in the sky for when you die, but it's meat on the plate while you wait. It's not pie in the sky when you die, it's meat on the plate while you wait. That's the message of Jesus. Yes, there is about the hereafter, but actually it's about now. That life in all its fullness begins now. It's a life which continues beyond death, yes, but it's a life which has richness 
and diversity and fullness that can't be found anywhere else. And it's a richness of fullness that could be found in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a lockdown. It's a richness and a fullness that can be found in the trials and persecutions of this life. When I was training for the Methodist ministry, I, uh, I was, uh, one of the things I did was went on placement to a, uh, a Methodist minister who also had a prison chaplaincy ministry. And I went into, into that prison and speaking as a former police officer, I, I must admit that I went with a certain amount of laissez-faire. But actually what I found in the prison was people with real needs. But I also found people in there who had found a peace and a freedom in Christ that they'd never experienced anywhere else. I remember speaking to one chap who was serving 14 years. Now, I know from my previous experience, you don't get 14 years for a trivial matter. He was inside for something quite serious. He was on fire for Jesus. He got a life in its fullness, a freedom in prison that he'd never experienced anywhere else. That's the life that Jesus offers to everyone who will put their trust in him. That's the reason that he came, so that we could experience that life in all its fullness. And he promises it to all of his flock, every single one of them that he knows by name. So, friends, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever you're watching this, know that we serve, that we love the one who is the way into that sheepfold, the gate. This shepherd is one who loves us, who knows us and calls us by name, that we're not just a number, we're not just part of a huge flock, we're loved individually, completely. The shepherd speaks to us and we can hear him speaking with us and we can respond and move into a relationship with him. And the shepherd gently leads. We're never driven anywhere that we do not want to go. He leads us gently and lovingly. And we can know security and peace and life in all its fullness. That's a life that I experience and that I know. And it's a life that I want other people to know about too. And the way to all of these things has a name. And it's the name above every name. It's the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's pray together. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this passage of Scripture. And Father, there are many, many other things that could be said about this passage. But Lord, we just want to concentrate today on the positive, on the way that we can come into relationship with the living God through Jesus Christ. And that is the only way. We thank you that we are loved as individuals, that we're called by name, that he leads us and that we can trust him to lead us into good places. And Heavenly Father, we thank you that through faith in him, whatever our circumstances, wherever we are, whatever we've done, whatever position we're in, that we can know life in all its fullness. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I'm going to hand over 
to the Reverend uh, Janet Tanner, who's going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. Janet Tanner here, um, at home in the Whittick Manse, with our prayers of intercession, our prayers of concern for the church, for the world and for ourselves. Now, there's a response in these uh, prayers. When I say, guide us, good shepherd, you can respond along the right paths. So it goes like this, guide us, good shepherd, along the right paths. So we pray. We pray for the church throughout the world that in this time of restricted movement and meeting we may find authentic ways of faithful worship of the, the living, loving, unbounded God and find ways of faithful witness to Jesus, the Good Shepherd who holds open the door to humankind's truest freedoms. Guide us, Good Shepherd, along the right paths. We pray for the world, that together we may find the wisdom and will to change our ways, so that people and planet may emerge from this pandemic to work with the Creator, to heal broken bodies, broken minds and hearts, so that all will be renewed and full of rejoicing. Guide us, Good Shepherd, along the right paths. We pray for all who are ill, at home, in care homes and hospitals, and for all who look after them and provide for their needs. In their time of great need, may each one recognise Christ drawing alongside them, sharing exhaustion, discomfort and pain. May each one experience the caring and compassion of the Saviour. Guide us, Good Shepherd along the right paths. We pray for individuals and families everywhere. Those isolated, anxious or lonely. Those with no space to move or think. Those in abusive situations. May we be blessed by knowing that there will come a day when we will be led into broad open spaces for our bodies, for our minds and souls, restored to our families and our friends. Guide us, Good Shepherd, along the right paths. God, Father of us all, we pray for those who are dying, anxious and afraid. We pray for all their loved ones and their carers. Bless each one with your peace. Guide us, Good Shepherd, along the right paths. And in a time of silence, let's bring to God our own concerns, our own needs and difficulties, our joys and our sorrows.
God our Father, hear our prayer. May we follow the way of Christ, the Good Shepherd, with joy, the one who leads us into abundant life. Through his name we pray. Amen. Well, once again, I hope that this service has been a blessing to you. I know it's been a blessing to me as I've prepared it and thought about these Bible passages, that we have a wonderful Saviour. And so we come to our final blessing. This week and every week, may you know the peace of God which passes all understanding, a peace that can be with us in the midst of crises and difficulties. And as we go into the coming week, may you go knowing that the Father goes with you and you have the blessing, the blessing of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. May God bless you. May you stay safe and keep well. God bless.